So, hi everyone. Uh, nice to have you here for this new edition of the UTM virtual coffee webinars. Uh, today, focusing on governance with an intervention by Dr. Fulia Kandemir from the city of Antalya. Then she's going to present herself uh, just afterwards. We're also welcoming Igor Pessoa. Uh, assistant professor from the universe, University of Twente, who's going to introduce himself as well. Please, the floor is yours if you want to if you want to give the the committee uh, an overview of who you are and why you are joining us today. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this invitation. Uh, I am Dr. Fulia Kandemir from Antalya Metropolitan Municipality. Uh, first of all, I can introduce a little bit myself. Uh, I'm working as a senior researcher uh, in the municipality in climate change and zero waste department. Uh, I am working as a nature, uh, nature natural scientist uh, in the municipality. I'm working only for the scientific uh, studies uh, in the municipality. Uh, I, I'm trying to combine all of the uh, silo departments together, uh, depending on the science. Uh, actually, this is a very big radical uh, actually step for the municipality. Uh, two years ago, I started uh, with the municipality um, because of the decision of our mayor, Mr. Muitim Bajek, employment of the natural scientist uh, to the municipality to work for the climate change uh, with the scientific literature. Uh, then now we're working together uh, with academia, uh, with municipality. Uh, I'm also the expert at Athens University. Uh, space sciences and technologies department. Uh, I can introduce myself and uh, I want to actually present my uh, mayor sensory uh, greetings to you. Uh, Mr. Mohit Mujek, greetings to you and my advisor, mayor, head of department, head of climate change and zero waste department, also uh, representing uh, the high uh, greetings to you. Thank you so much for this uh, invitation again. It's our pleasure to to have you here, Fulia. Thank you for it. Thank you very much, Igor. Please. Hi everyone. My name is uh, Igor Professor. Um, thanks for the invitation. I'm an assistant professor in the University of Twente in the Netherlands. I I mainly work on urban governance. Um, my research focuses a lot on how citizens uh, work together, collaborate to change their cities, and how. This collaboration also works with the uh, public institutions, so usually municipalities um, on wicked um, urban issues. So climate change, of course, is one of them. I have um, recently worked in a project, for example, in Amsterdam, how citizens participate or got together to implement um, some um, municipal guidelines on the energy transition, how to make uh, their neighborhoods more um, environmentally friendly more um, carbon neutral. Um, so yeah, that's my line of expertise. I'm very curious to, to hear um, from the, uh, and learn from the experience in Antalya. So yeah, very uh, sounds, sounds uh, exciting. Thank you very much, Igor. Fulia, I think now it's time for you to, to get the, into the spotlight and present us your, your city's case, please. Okay. Okay, if it's okay for you, I want to start my screen sharing. Yes, you can see, Perfect. I guess, my screen. Yes. Perfectly, yes. Okay, uh, thank you so much again for this invitation. Now, uh, I want to actually introduce our role uh, in combating climate change. I want to uh, introduce briefly, sometimes briefly, sometimes in detail, uh, our case studies, our best examples uh, about combating climate change mitigation and adaptation. Also, the uh, actually uh, revision of the ideas of the municipality governance. I want to introduce our insight uh, or point of view uh, as an Antalya Metropolitan Municipality. And we're actually naming this Antalya Metropolitan Municipality model for the country, for Turkey, because um, actually in 2021, we started this model. Uh, we revised all of the uh, traditional uh, governance idea uh, of the municipality in Antalya. Uh, now, uh, actually, as a senior researcher and natural scientist, I want to introduce this model to you. Um, this is very big, um, uh, actually, the moment for me to introduce this model as a model, uh, actually, uh, our municipality governance. And 
actually last week i was uh, i was at cop 29 now uh, my uh, other team uh, is in uh, cop 29 uh, at this week and this is our actually presentation uh, for cop 29 uh, at the same time i'm sharing with you this is very uh, good moment for me because uh, at the same day now uh, my advisor mayor presenting this presentation at the cop 29 and i'm representing to you now uh, this model and thank you so much again for this uh, actually chance uh, actually, I want to first of all say about our contents uh, of the presentation. Sometimes I want to uh, actually do the simultaneous talks, uh, speech uh, about the presentation because uh, actually this is so ambitious moment uh, to uh, talk about our model uh, because uh, actually paving the way of the uh, our mayor, Mr. Muhittin Böcek, uh, in 2021, we revised all of the idea and now we are taking the benefits and the outcomes uh, of the model uh, with the successes and fulfillings uh, and the high scores actually from the reporting platforms. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about our uh, current situation as Antalya, as the city. Uh, we are uh, located in the southern part uh, of the Turkey and very attractive city, very touristic city, uh, Antalya. Now we are trying to service uh, to uh, stable uh, citizens, also the uh, tourists, uh, we have uh, always high number of tourists uh, in the summer season and also in the winter, the other seasons, we have always tourists because very attractive city uh, of country. Uh, I can say we are the fifth most crowded city in Turkey uh, and actually population growth has been 98% uh, in the last 10 years. This is very huge number uh, for the city because you can see here Istanbul 17%, but Antalya is always increasing uh, day by day uh, because of this attraction. Uh, from the uh, international uh, visitors and also the internal visitors in Turkey. Uh, we have always uh, actually um, nobility uh, to the city. Also, we have uh, economic contribution, so much contribution actually, the biggest contributor uh, to Turkey's uh, tourism revenues. Uh, Antalya has this biggest contribution. Also, we are the leader uh, in greenhouse cultivation and citrus production in the agricultural uh, sector. Uh, we have dedicated districts uh, is uh, inter uh, interesting with the greenhouse agriculture. And this is very, uh, actually, high number of uh, districts we have. Uh, they are doing intense agriculture for country and for the, actually, actually for the other countries. Uh, and I can say we are the leader in the greenhouse cultivation, greenhouse agriculture uh, activities. Also, we have very long coastline uh, in the country. You can see here second province with the longest coastline uh, in Turkey. And we have actually a very uh, dynamic uh, summer season uh, because of this longest coastline. Uh, so much tourists uh, also deciding to move uh, Antalya uh, to do the vacation uh, in uh, Turkey. And that means so much tourists. And you can see the number at the right side. 27 million tourists a year. This is very big number for the city because all of these numbers means managing these numbers, waste, water, and all of the essential services uh, as a municipality. Uh, also, you can see so much people uh, we are trying to service. Uh, and also, our airport always busy. You can see here the second busiest airport in the country. Uh, in 2023, uh, we served more than uh, 20, 35 million passengers uh, in Antalya Airport. Uh, this attraction actually uh, means that I said before, but I want to repeat again, managing and servicing to all of the people with the essential services uh, as a municipality. And we are always busy. We are always dynamic we should be actually and you can see also in the uh, left side right side again uh, Antalya is one of the most visited cities ranking third in Europe and fourth in the world but as a as a city we are encountering with climate change impacts uh, we are located in the Mediterranean basin. Uh, actually, we are in the hot spot uh, of the of the world, and we have so much actually climate change impacts as a city, and we are really facing with these problems. Uh, precipitation patterns uh, you can see at the map, and the location of the city you can see at the country. Um, this is southern part. Uh, you can see here Antalya. The precipitation pattern always vulnerable to drought and also vulnerable to floods. 
uh, Antalya is facing with the huge floods and also uh, drought, uh, prone to drought uh, as a city. Now we are actually depending on the groundwater resources, but high number of visitors and high number of people and uh, overusing the water. Uh, that means the city is prone to uh, drought. And you can see here uh, at the right side, the drought index of the city. Uh, now you can see uh, the city is a normal level uh, as an index, but uh, with the precipitation index, we can see that uh, this city is uh, prone to drought and also the coastal and urban floods. This year, uh, uh, in December uh, 2024, uh, we broke record as a precipitation, uh, heavy precipitation, heavy rainfall, and five central districts uh, damaged by the uh, urban flood, uh, just like the uh, Valencia, because we are located at the same basin and we are encountering with the same impacts, I can say. And also natural disaster risk so high uh, for the city uh, and rising temperatures, not only in surface, also in sea, sea uh, surface temperature increasing, uh, uh, actually uh, affecting us, uh, not only affecting the uh, surface temperature and urban lifestyle, urban comfort. Also, we are encountering with sea surface temperature rises. Uh, and that means biodiversity loss and also uh, invasive species also uh, actually uh, entering the sea uh, and the coast to the Antalya. Uh, and now we are dealing with the, the overcoming this problem uh, as a municipality. I said before, municipality should always dynamic and always uh, give the feedback to all of the challenge uh, instantly. And invasive species, uh, because of the uh, rising sea level uh, temperature, uh, our focus point and this challenge uh, actually calls to uh, cause municipality establish a sea, le a sea, co co sea and cost management branch. Uh, now we established because of this challenge and a branch, actually, I can say, uh, yes, we are facing so much climate change impacts, but we should always uh, give the feedback instantly to these challenges because local governments uh, in the city, uh, in, in Turkey, should always in the focus point, uh, in the focus, in the origin, and uh, we should take the actions immediately. And uh, in the right side, uh, you can see a map as a Turkish. This is the meteorological disasters distribution. Uh, of the country and red color. What, which is the red color? Who is the red color? Antalya is the red color and the highest number of hazards, highest number of meteorological hazards uh, is actually uh, is in, on, are in Antalya and uh, storm surges, urban floods, extreme uh, heat waves, cold waves, uh, heavy rainfall and also storms, uh, sometimes tornadoes uh, in the western side and eastern side coastal uh, areas in Antalya, we're always facing these problems. Also, this damage uh, also hitting the sectors in Antalya. First of all, agricultural sector, tourism sector, uh, forestry sector, or fishing sector, always um, under the impact of this uh, climate change, uh, climate change effects and meteorological disaster, meteorological hazards, forest fires. We are always encountering in the fire season huge forest fires. In 2021, we lost. Uh, approximately 80,000 hectares of our forest in the one fire, and Manavgat fire, we lost all Manavgat. This is the district of the Antalya in the uh, eastern side, and we lost all of the forest in Manavgat. This is the actual record uh, of Turkey, second record of Turkey, uh, losing the forest areas in a one fire. And also drug risk, I said before, invasive species and biodiversity loss, always impact uh, affecting the local communities uh, native species and the all of the species in antalya and we should always be uh action uh, about this uh, climate change impacts i'm i said before but i want to repeat again and you can see here flood disasters flood disasters in antalya this is the distribution in the left side and in the center side, tornado disasters, distribution of the tornado disasters in the city and the storm events 
uh, distribution of the storm events in the city. Uh, actually, this um, impacts always hitting us, uh, these disasters uh, always hitting us. And you can see the red colors in the left side, flood disasters distribution. The red colors is our center districts. In this year, we encountered with have rainfall and all of the systems disrupted, damaged by this huge flood in December. We uh, actually lived this uh, flood and this is the really uh, record. We broke the record as a rainfall and actually we lost lives, we lost uh, goods and we lost uh, essential services uh, in a one heavy rainfall. And we saw that climate change is very, very important uh, issue uh, for the local governments, for the cities. Forest fires and distribution of the forest fires in the center and sea level temp sea water temperature change by years. And you can see uh, the graphs uh, in the right side. Uh, that means actually uh, marine biodiversity loss uh, in the coastal areas uh, of Antalya. And uh, actually when the uh, sea level temperature rises, the trees or the uh, local residents uh, actually uh, don't, don't prefer to swim in the sea because we saw uh, at the summer season, in this summer season, high level temperatures in the sea. And actually that means actually extreme events, also the biodiversity loss, fishing sector damages, and also touristic attraction decreases uh, in the coastal areas. And I said before, but uh, you can see the temperature rises in the surface and in the sea. Uh, and also, uh, Antalya is always prone to all of the impacts. And that means uh, be always in action uh, as a local government. And uh, after all of these impacts, I said before, uh, we actually had to uh, create an approach for climate action. And in 2021, uh, we revised our idea as a metropolitan municipality because all of these impacts and being active for the climate action, because we know that urban areas responsible uh, for uh, responsible for 60 and 80 percent of energy consumption and 70 percent greenhouse gas emissions, and our city is so attractive, so dynamic, and that means greenhouse emissions and energy consumption and waste, uh, waste uh, amount of waste increasing, and we should manage it. Uh, but that means an approach. Uh, we need an approach for climate action. Uh, in 2021, we first of all decided uh, for our climate action, uh, revise our climate action to people-centered climate action. Uh, and this approach, this re revision of the municipal governance actually uh, bring, brought to us uh, new successes and new models, new frameworks uh, in the municipality governance. I will say uh, in the, the next slides, but I can say, first of all, people-centered climate action, really important for a local government uh, because uh, all of the challenges uh, in, uh, affects the, all of the challenges affect the people uh, in the city, not only local uh, residents, not only local communities, also the tourists, and always they are vulnerable to the climate change impact. And the center of the, all of this challenge should be uh, local governments, municipalities. Uh, they are very strength and they, are, they have power uh, to manage all of the uh, city's essential services. And in 2021, we revised all of the framework, uh, traditional climate action, all traditional municipal governance to people-centered climate action and people-centered municipality governance. First of all, I can say uh, our CCAP, uh, in 2022, we published our sustainable energy and climate action plan. But before this plan, we revised, I said before, I'm, I'm always repeating this term, but uh, this is very important for a municipality revision because uh, municipality is always traditional and you can't, uh, sometimes you can't revise uh, basic ideas immediately or instantly. But our municipality, fortunately, our municipality are always open to uh, new ideas and new, uh, actually, opinions uh, about the uh, about uh, transition to, from the traditional to modern. Uh, and in 2021, before the CCAP, uh, we uh, transformed our, first of all, our organizational framework 
from the branch to department. We had climate change branch, uh, depending on the uh, environmental protection department. Uh, and this branch uh, had no budget, uh, flexible budget, own budget, uh, and had no flexibility uh, in the previous times but as a branch. But in 2021, we transformed this branch style to the department style. Now we have climate change and zero vest department. And that means flexibility in budget, flexibility in operation. Now we can, we have own operations. We have own budget to use for the climate actions, for mitigation and for adaptation. And uh, actually that means flexible employment uh, of the experts, technicians or natural scientists just like me, uh, because uh, under the uh, environmental protection department, they should always depend on the another department's uh, ideas or opinions. But now climate change and zero waste department should act free and employ all of the related people uh, inside the municipality. Uh, now we have so much experts about the climate change, uh, engineers, technicians, and scientists uh, in the climate change and zero waste department. Also, we have social scientists uh, linked to the climate change and zero waste department for the distribution and for political actions uh, after all of the climate action. Uh, after this transformation, we uh, published our CCAP, uh, I said before, uh, and we, uh, as a, a signatory uh, municipality of Covenant of Mayor, we should do that, actually, we had to publish our CCAP, but our CCAP is just like the uh, scientific initiative uh, for the Antalya Metropolitan Municipality, because we engaged all of the stakeholders uh, for this CCAP preparation. Uh, at the same time of the CCAP, we published another idea uh, to Turkey because uh, this is the first uh, framework uh, engaging all of the stakeholders to the municipality. Uh, this framework called us by us uh, an environmental board of Antalya Metropolitan Municipality. This is the new framework for Turkey because uh, yes, you can take climate actions, you can prepare, you can publish CCAPs, but uh, you should, first of all, engage all of the related stakeholders at the municipal governance or municipal actions. Uh, but stakeholders always different and have another voices for the municipal governance or municipal management uh, or city governance. And uh, actually, we engaged all of the stakeholders using environmental board framework. This framework published at the same time of the CCAP, and we use this board to uh, prepare the CCAP uh, calculations or uh, initiative measurements also, and the results of the CCAPs we publish together. Uh, and environmental board is not just like the traditional meeting. Uh, we separated this environmental board two steps, meetings, general meetings, and also research and development meetings, because we have not only NGOs, NPOs, we have academia, we have private companies for the challenges, solving the challenges, uh, and we are separating the meetings, general and research and development meetings. And this is not annual. This is not, for example, six months. We are not uh, engaging stakeholders uh, for a period. We are engaging stakeholders sometimes by month by month, sometimes week by week, because sometimes the challenge should instant uh, feedbacks or solutions. Uh, we are activating environmental board immediately, but sometimes we are doing it by month by month uh, to be active uh, as an environmental board. And actually, as a CCAP and as an environmental board, we have commitments uh, because of the COM. Uh, but this is not only traditional uh, commitment. You can see here in the right side, 40% emission reduction by 2040. And uh, we want to be in 2050 carbon neutral. This is not a traditional commitment. Now we have so much efforts uh, to reach the target uh, because uh, this is very huge discussion. Maybe we can discuss later because uh, as a scientist in municipality, I'm always uh, focusing this idea, this commitments so old uh, for the municipalities. Three or four periods, they decided to commit to these reductions, but uh, to reach the target, always responsibility just like the heavy burden for the latest period mayor. 
Uh, and actually, we should change this idea maybe uh, for the uh, municipalities. Maybe we can discuss later. And you can see in the, the right side our mayor uh, at the publication, uh, at the uh, general announcement of the uh, our CCAP in 2022, we published. And actually, always we are uh, working uh, with his um, uh, motto and with his uh, freedom, giving the freedom to all of the experts and the all of the technicians or scientists uh, in the municipality. Uh, actually, I can say we're free to uh, give uh, or say all of the ideas uh, to the, about the governance. And uh, actually, I want to pass a little bit because uh, you can see here our target scenario, uh, business as usual scenario and our uh, actually action scenario. And you can see in the left side our uh, emissions uh, current emissions by sectors. Now we are uh, really uh, actually dealing with the buildings and transportation uh, because uh, these numbers uh, actually uh, focused by build in buildings and transportation as a current emissions. Uh, when we solve these uh, sectors, maybe we can uh, accelerate our uh, reaching the target um, actions. Uh, now we have so much actually initiatives. Uh, maybe we can discuss later. Uh, but uh, the focus point first of all transportation because so much trees so much people and so much cars and uh, now we are dealing with this problem uh, we are uh, actually accelerating the actions about the public transportation uh, with another uh, actually uh, fractations uh, not only buses electrical buses and trams and the metro now uh, we are uh, actually uh, managing this uh, issues about the transportation and buildings another uh, topic for the current emissions uh, actually we have some initiatives about the buildings uh, because of the uh, ccap because uh, maybe you know that we should revise our ccaps uh, because of the energy poverty now we should add a section uh, about the energy poverty and that means buildings actions for the uh, local government actually and a multi criteria assessment analysis, uh, we are using this analysis. Uh, actually, this is the part of the, our idea revision uh, and the traditional uh, municipal governance shift to uh, modern, maybe I can say, uh, tailored uh, governance uh, of the municipality. We tailored a little bit this transition, uh, this uh, trans, uh, this um, old or previous municipal governance to the uh, new and tailored municipal governance uh, in Antalya Metropolitan Municipality by using multi criteria assessment and breaking breaking the silos but between the departments, related departments in an initiative for an initiative. You can see here some um, uh, some combinations for the mitigation action and adaptation action and greenhouse emissions inventory. Uh, but I want to pass because of the short, uh, we have a short time, not so long time, I, uh, I know, uh, but maybe we can discuss later uh, if you have some questions. And uh, you can see here our mitigations actions. I want to say I don't want to say all of the things because it is so um, uh, complicated here to re read or hear all of the actions. But these actions located in our CCAP, uh, and we have Turkish and English version of our CCAP. Uh, and I can uh, share with you if you want to see or read our uh, planning uh, about mitigation and adaptation uh, as a city. Uh, and also we are uh, actually, this is open source, uh, this uh, reports. You can uh, access to our website and you can download all of the reports. Uh, this is not, uh, this is not um, uh, private. This is transparent for all the uh, local uh, communities for uh, all the visiting people to Antalya and to international areas. We are always uh, opening all of the reports uh, to the uh, people, actually, I can say, and you can reach using website of Antalya Metropolitan Municipality. And transportation, you can see our mitigations actions, so much actions we have, and that means so much uh, monetization uh, thing a monetized thing because after the actions you should monitor monitor uh, all of the actions uh, you are doing or not or you are successful or not uh, after the publication uh, publishing all of the actions about mitigation and adaptation now we are in the monitoring section uh, of the CCAP uh, with the initiatives we are creating initiatives for these actions and we are checking 
we are, for example, yes, done, done, done. And then now we are doing our monetization uh, for this, uh, for uh, about being successful or not, because we should always report our actions and our monetization results to Carbon Disclosure Platform, CDP. Uh, every year we are reporting uh, our all of the calculations, uh, our actions uh, to the international platform. Uh, and now you can see our actions, but uh, these actions, not only actions, now we should monitor. Uh, actually, this is the very challenging part of the municipality. Yes, you can create actions, you can create initiatives, but monetization always challenging. Now we are trying to deal with this problem. West and wastewater and agriculture, we have also mitigation actions and we are uh, actually focusing always agriculture. I said before, we are the leader in greenhouse uh, cultivation uh, as a city. Uh, and that means uh, actually listening all of the voices of farmers, uh, vulnerable groups uh, about the agriculture in the uh, intense agriculture districts. Uh, actually, uh, our environmental board always focusing the agricultural sector or agricultural areas, uh, first of all, and waste and wastewater. We have three, uh, we have three uh, parts in the municipality. First of all, environmental board. Second, waste and wastewater branch uh, of the metropolitan municipality. It's a little bit separated by the municipality. They have own budget, they have own governance system. And also the municipalities, sea and coastal uh, management department, they're always linked by wastewater because we should uh, monitor the pollution of the marine areas. And they're always working together. And ecosystem services, biodiversity and green spaces, and also water management. I said before, we have a direct trade. We have a branch or department, I can say. Uh, we are calling ASAT. Uh, that means um, the waste and water management uh, direct trade of the municipality. They have own actions. Also, CCAP uh, have, has the actions linked by this uh, direct trade actions together. We are linking. Uh, always our actions together and when we publish CCAP we work together for the water management best and water man best and uh, wastewater and water management and ecosystem services you can see here our actions uh, about blue infrastructure green roof afforestation uh, we're always focusing to afforestation and uh, actually carbon sequestration areas of the city uh, now we have some uh, initiatives about the green spaces and also urban agriculture. Now we have a new uh, initiative about the urban agriculture and we are so excited to actually uh, create the area for the uh, vulnerable groups in a neighborhood. Uh, I can say now we're preparing this initiative. After this uh, realization uh, of the initiative, we can share maybe the results uh, of the urban agriculture parks or uh, climate cooperative now we are calling this uh, and this will be uh, maybe the best example uh, best good best example of the municipality in the next years and urban infrastructure waste management public health and disaster management we have adaptation actions about the food waste and raising awareness and recycling uh, bicycle lanes, also the uh, monitorization of the uh, actually uh, air pollution and disaster ba GIS based risk maps, uh, early warning systems. We and now we have a proposal about the early warning systems to, to CDRI. Uh, now we're preparing a proposal about the early warning systems for uh, public health and also the, uh, about the other disaster management, especially for flood. Uh, actually, we are always activating our related departments together. I said before, this is the revision of the traditional uh, idea of the governance. Maybe we can discuss later because this is very radical. This was very radical step for the municipality to pass this, uh, to transform this uh, actually idea from the silo to the uh, being together. Uh, actually, now we have some initiatives, but you can see here adaptation actions. This is actions, but now you, you can also hear uh, from me some initiatives about these actions. And uh, the other step I said before, uh, monitoring step uh, for the uh, reporting systems. 
And agriculture and tourism, we have some adaptation actions uh, about the farmers, nature-based solutions, and for tourism, responsible tourism. Uh, sometimes, uh, actually, we are dealing with the tourism problems or challenge uh, so much uh, as a city. Uh, but maybe I can say this, we have no tax, city tax, uh, as a tourism, uh, for the tourism as Antalya. So much touristic uh, areas we have so much uh, tourists we have but we have no tourist test test tax city tax uh, as antalya uh, the natural go national government uh, has this tax tax uh, for the uh, national ministry uh, but they're not giving this uh, share uh, to the local governments and we are dealing with all of the problems with our own budget or credits grants or funds from the international area and uh, I said before, but uh, actually, I want to say again, uh, we are implementing exemplary projects, uh, case studies uh, or initiatives as a part of its efforts to adapt to mitigate the climate change. You can see in the right side, we are the first climate friendly organization in the Turkey, in Turkey, in country. Uh, we certificated as a climate friendly organization. And we have the first public building to construct storage integrated SPP solar power plant on its roof. And we are uh, producing our own energy. Uh, and we have Turkey's first facility generating electricity from waste heat became operational. And also we have the first implementation and electronic ship inspection system because of the invasive species and because of the pollution, marine pollution. Uh, and in Turkey, uh, we have the first Every landscaping project in the country became operational and awarded. Uh, and you can see here, afforestation efforts, we have so much. Uh, approximately 2 million saplings we were planted by municipality. And bicycle path, it's very challenging uh, issue for the local communities. They are always demanding the bicycle paths. And we are increasing. And uh, the bicycle paths, you can see here, compared to 2019, 98% we increase our bicycle ways. And actually, uh, in the first moment of my uh, presentation, I said a revision of the idea. Now you can see our corporate structuring and environmental management step. This is our framework. In the left side, launch of the institutional restructuring in 2020, uh, we, uh, we actually transformed the uh, idea, institutional idea. Uh, first of all, establishing the department, climate change and uh, clean uh, zero waste department in 2022, but in 2020 we employed mayor advisor specialized in environment. This is the first in Turkey uh, in municipality. We have a mayor advisor in environment and climate change, and uh, this mayor advisor, just like the focal point of the municipality, he is managing all of the departments uh, under the uh, under the mayor. And uh, now we are working together with him. Uh, also, after this uh, mayor advisor uh, employment, we changed the branch to department, climate change and zero waste department. And in 2020s, we linked directly our strategic plan to sustainable development goals. And uh, actually 11 goals now linked to our strategic plan. And in 2020, in the same time of our CCAP, we established our environmental board. You can see here 13 meetings were held in two years. Uh, these meetings, uh, field investigations, scientific research, research and development meetings, and traditional meetings we have in environmental board. And I said before, climate-friendly organization, and we have so much SPPs. Uh, over five years, the number of SPPs tripled from seven to 17. Their capacity increased threefold. And uh, with 17 SPPs, uh, we produce so much energy uh, for the households. Uh, and now we are increasing the number and capacity of SPP solar power plants in the city because we are calling Antalya sunny city and we should use this power actually for, uh, the, uh, for the mitigation of uh, carbon footprint uh, of the municipality. And West Heat Energy, you can see in the right side, uh, as a first in Turkey, uh, West to Energy facility it was established by the municipality uh, at the solid waste disposal facility. 
and uh, actually we are uh, preventing CO2 emissions. Uh, also, we are using waste heat for the uh, facility, uh, inside of the facility, and that means we are uh, actually uh, cycling the energy uh, in the uh, facility uh, with this waste heat energy technology. And we have biomass energy facilities, four facilities, one is high tech, uh, and in operation, told pool in operation. Uh, and actually, uh, in this biomass energy facilities, we employed the uh, local communities for the facilities. Uh, and we are increasing the employment rate uh, in the city also. Uh, in the uh, around area uh, of the biomass energy facilities, we are employing the uh, neighborhood people. Uh, first of all, uh, we are prioritizing uh, these people uh, to work with the biomass energy facilities. And this is very important for the uh, local government to increase the employment rate. And we have some networks and memberships, international networks and memberships, and this is increasing. Uh, actually, we want to give some uh, special uh, memberships, Covenant of Mayors generally, and CDP, Carbon Disclosure Projects. We're always reporting our all of the actions, mitigation and adaptation actions, also our monitoring, monitoring actions, monitoring calculations. Uh, and actually, uh, last year, uh, we became uh, the leadership level A score in the adaptation. For in, this is the first uh, first time in Antalya. Uh, we increased our uh, score for the CDP platform, Net Zero uh, Now we are the member of the Net Zero and we will work with Bucharest, uh, changing the experiences together. Rich cities raised to zero. We are the member, Met Cities, Metropolis, Cities for Forest. Very important because I said before, we are always encountering with the huge forest fires. Uh, now we are working with Mersin together. Mersin is another city of Turkey uh, for this membership. Uh, and Civitas, the other network, so sustainable and smart mobility network. Uh, we are contributing to projects to make public transportation and road system environmentally and friendly. Uh, I can say this memberships briefly, but uh, actually we have uh, another uh, memberships. Uh, if you have questions, we can open this uh, section. And I will say, I want to say again, uh, this is our CDP uh, score. Um, last year uh, this is the first in antalya we increased our score a level in adaptation uh, actually this uh, score inc increment uh, paved the way uh, this success actually opened all of the uh, new ways to us new networks new projects new proposals uh, new um, actually collaborations uh, actually we're always um, we're always interesting with the cdp reporting it's so important for the local government uh, for the municipalities uh, to report all of the internal actions uh, to the international area uh, and actually after the cdp uh, a score uh, we actually um, motivated together, we motivated as a municipality, we applied so much networks, so, so much memberships, um, net zero cities became after this a score and so much interact projects. Now we have collaborating with another countries together, seven proposals we have as a metropolitan municipality, seven proposals as a main partner, and we will work after the announcement, all of the, um, the proposal score, uh, maybe we will work with the same time in the same time with all of the uh, projects together uh, actually maybe this um uh, success uh, not only for cdp scores i'm always uh, actually uh, it's so important for me uh, breaking the silos between the departments uh, opened the way to, to work together to collaborate with the, in other countries together for the international projects. Uh, previous pre periods, uh, they were a negative behavior from the municipality um, uh, with uh, working with the international area. But now, a score, the other successes, memberships, networks, and the uh, being together as a departments, uh, creating a tailored framework based on the projects, uh, actually opened the way, uh, working with the international area together as a metropolitan municipality. 
And you can see here some transportation uh, solutions uh, in municipality. This is just like case studies, smart intersection systems, bicycle transportation, rail system, electric vehicle, charging stations, and low official vehicle fleet. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these, uh, these are our uh, sustainable solutions in transportation. And water management and conservation projects, you can see our SCADA system, uh, wastewater management and recovery, tiered water pricing. It is very important, tiered water pricing. We're tailoring the pricing uh, because of the usage of the water uh, by the local communities. Uh, Great water recycling and integrated urban water management plan for the 2015. We are uh, actually thinking future, not only current uh, or history. We are always thinking future as a metropolitan municipality. And marine protection management, so important because the, you can see in the first uh, electric ship monitoring or inspection system. This is the first in Turkey. Now we are monitoring all of the costs uh, of Antalya using high resolution thermal cameras in 22 coastal points to monitor, monitor, monitor maritime activities. In this year, 56 ships were inspected and imposed. And we are using this uh, actually budget uh, from the uh, inspecting uh, or imposing, we are using all this budget for our environmental or climate studies, not for other municipal uh, services. We are using all of the budget because of the imposing, uh, we are using for environment and climate. And more in cleaning efforts, combating invasive species, we are dealing with lionfish and pufferfish in our coast. Um, we have some events uh, about this um, combating uh, invasive species. And for the first time in Turkey, lionfish was added to the municipal social facilities menu to promote consumption. The people is eating now because of the advanced chefs uh, of the uh, our social facilities. Uh, yes, we are catching, we are combating. Also, we are promoting the people uh, as a, a menu uh, of this uh, invasive species. And blue flag achievements, you can see here in agriculture, environmental friendly farmer cart, it is awarded uh, initiative, closed circuit in irrigation system, solar energy support for irrigation and digital agriculture project are uh, other uh, initiatives and case studies. And training and awareness activities, you can see here, uh, environmental education and innovation center. This is the first in Turkey. Now we are working uh, in the center with all of the communities, uh, with all of the age groups. Uh, in the center. We have so much activities, workshops or uh, awareness activities. Uh, you can see here uh, for, uh, 452 events have been organized and thousands of people have participated in this uh, establishment. Bird observation activities, eco literacy trainings, uh, forest fire trainings and plastic free coasts, plastic free seas, also the other training and awareness activities. And international funding projects, you can see here solar school projects for the youths, uh, because we have uh, unemployment youths uh, in uh, Antalya. And actually we are trying to employ uh, all of the youths for the uh, green energy, uh, green energy uh, facilities or green energy companies. And we actually established this school for the youths, we are training uh, the people, the youths for the renewable energy uh, com uh, uh, companies. And after these uh, trainings, we are trying to provide these youths to employ by the uh, companies after that. And uh, also by, uh, during these trainings, uh, we actually paid a small financial support. You support, you can see your 10 euros for each training day, Cutler matchup project, very huge project for the municipality, green and future cities project we are working with World Bank. And that means awards and recognitions. Beautiful, yeah. Yes. And now we are, yes, I, I, am, I am also closing my, uh, stopping my presentation after two slides. Uh, and then we can open the discuss. Thank you so much. Uh, you can see here our awards and recognitions. Uh, we have so much awards and recognitions after all of the fulfillings and ongoing projects you can see here. A climax. Now I am the coordinator as Antalya Metropolitan Municipality. It's so important for me and for my team. You can see here uh, SAMP, Sponge City Framework and Local Climate and Climate Action Plan. And also we have some feedbacks for more uh, ambitious climate actions. Actually, additional funding we are always need. Uh, we are demanding always additional funding. Sustainable funding mechanism we are always seeking considering the vulnerability of each city in Turkey. Uh, this is the national problem 
uh, national governments should prioritize, first of all, vulnerability cities uh, as a climate change and uh, accessible database. We're always demanding as a, as a metropolitan municipality and climate law. Uh, this is national problem, but uh, you can see uh, this is under construction climate law uh, in the Turkish national government. But we are seeking, we are waiting uh, this publication publishing of the climate law by national government. And thank you so much for uh, this chance. This is our book uh, from 2019, 2022. Uh, we published all of the studies uh, inside of this book. And uh, if you scan the QR code, you can reach. Uh, this is Turkish, but we have English version also. If you need, I can share with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Fulgia. Thank you so much. Uh, Igor, please, if you want to, if you want to, to debrief, for your presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fulia. Um, yeah, very interesting. I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know much about the context of um, Antalya and it seems quite challenging. I mean, when you start a presentation with all these different uh, challenges and I thought, OK, this is doomed. You know, there's no <laughs> solution. You are you're facing so many dangers um, and it's hard for me to 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 also to grasp this because if, if you compare with the Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam, which is our biggest city, is not doesn't even have a million people, right? And despite our challenge being under the the sea uh, uh, sea level, it's yeah, um, it, it's it's still another dimension of uh, complexity that you're dealing with. So um, I have actually basically two reactions I want to uh, um, put forward, and I'm, I'm yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to be a bit strict on my time because I'm also going to, I'm going to have to leave in four minutes to another meeting. But I wanted to uh, ask you and at least give you the opportunity to react on two two things. One was about the um, the people-centered approach that you mentioned on uh, slide six, because this is a topic that I yeah I work with and I think also is a challenge that we have in the Netherlands to how to implement this right and what what kind of what what do you mean exactly with this people-centered approach? How do they fit on all these different actions and mitigation strategies that you presented. How, how also, how do you promote for people to have the knowledge, the means, the time, um, what kind of groups to reach different groups, be diverse, vulnerable groups, marginalized group, how, how, what is your approach? How, how, do they, how you see this? And the other one that I wanted to, yeah, ask you if you could also spend a bit of time to explaining, um, um, we have this uh, in the Netherlands that some, we learn a lot with failures, right? So also for you maybe to talk about things that are not going that well, not only the successful stories, but maybe some some difficult stories or the, the, the challenge that you learn and how, how, how we can improve from that. Because, um, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot of value on that as well, and not only on the awards and all the, the very successful projects that you have. Actually, thank you. Very good questions. First question is so important. Uh, I want to start with uh, people centered um, climate action or people centered governance of municipality. Uh, actually, uh, I can say uh, start with the idea of environmental board, because before this uh, framework, uh, they are uh, managing all of the municipality starts very traditionally. Uh, you can maybe you can imagine uh, approximately 3 million people, local residents, and they have always problems. They are trying to reach the mayor, directly to mayor, but they could, they can't do it because so much people and one, one person uh, and so much stakeholders, but again, one person. Uh, the idea of our mayor uh, when he uh, start mission, start uh, uh, management uh, of the municipality, he decided to distribute the power, strength, or management uh, capacity to other people. Because one cannot manage everything, but two or three can manage a little bit or break the silos and link all of the departments or stakeholders together. And they employed, just like the mayor power, uh, mayor advisor, uh, environment and climate, and they gave the, all of the authorization, uh, authority to this advisor to manage all of the related departments and also the stakeholders and the people-centered climate actions. Because um, maybe you can imagine mayors have another uh, background, not about environment, not about climate change. Uh, sometimes they have another background and they have another interest, 
But if you employ uh, environment and climate backgrounded people in your governance, not in your department, in your centered governance, they can do it, or he can do it, or she can do it. And now uh, we are linked by linked to admire of mayor of advisor. In our organizational diagram, you can see mayor, but under the mayor, you can see mayor advisor, and we are all linked to him. And then he decided to create an environmental board for the people-centered actions. The environmental board is not, not just like the linking academia, you know, for example, university, municipality, or NGOs. We are, first of all, linking to environmental board the vulnerable people, vulnerable communities. For example, the best study, the best example of the environmental board, I can say this is an honor maybe to say this because it is awarded by Guangzhou uh, Innovative Award, uh, eco-friendly farmer card. And for this initiative, our people-centered action depended on is uh, depending on the farmers because they're vulnerable groups of agriculture. They're producing agriculture, they're doing agriculture, but they're impacting by the agriculture because of the pesticides. And they came to municipality as a vulnerable group. And after this announcement of the farmers, yes, we have some damage because of the pesticide laden packaging base, we activated our environmental board and four meetings, two traditional meetings, two research and development meetings we held. But in the focus point, we are always originating the farmers and we are centering the people, vulnerable people because of the culture. And after that, electronic ship inspection system, the coastal people came to municipality. Actually, the um, pesticide laden packaging vest or the coastal management system, they are not uh, in the responsibility of municipality, general responsibility. This is not official responsibility of municipality. We have some another branches of natural government. But for example, the people, when the people came to municipality, you should solve this. You can't, uh, you can't do negative behavior to them. Uh, you can say, uh, this is not in our responsibility, you can say this. That means people-centered actions. And mayor have no link, always information, always information he has, but we are managing under the mayor all of the actions we are using environmental board. And this board idea, environmental board idea, now we are creating climate, um, climate working group uh, under the uh, environmental board. Uh, because now we are creating some uh, working groups. Uh, the first group will be about climate. Uh, and uh, we have some NGOs and MPOs uh, under the environmental board, but center belongs to people, vulnerable groups about the related topics. For agriculture, farmers, for marine, area, marine areas, the marine people, marine communities, I can say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fulia, for, for this. Uh, thank you also very much, Igor, for, for being here today with us. Please, Karel. Yes, thank you so much, Igor. We, we know that you, we don't want to borrow more time from you. Thank you so much for your feedback and your reaction. We'll, we'll, we'll make available the recordings and, and send you all the information as well. Thank you so much. I will continue, uh, continue your legacy and, and make a, a couple more questions maybe uh, and still three more minutes to everyone but thank you so much Igor if you, if you need to leave thank you um, well, un unfortunately I will also have to go back to my teaching activities uh, thank you very much for your presence here today uh, looking forward to to watch the the last part of the recording bye everyone thank you very much for for participating bye -bye. thank you so much I think I think Fulia we can we can continue the conversation probably in the portal which would be interesting. There is, uh, uh, I was, I was wondering about the publications that you mentioned um, uh, about uh, the, the, well, this book that, it, if it's in English, would be interesting to to take a look at it, uh, and also probably to make uh, a success story uh, available for everyone regarding this governance component, because you discussed this. It was quite clear this going from the the decision, the leadership of the major towards having this advisor, towards becoming not a branch but a department, towards having the environmental board. And I think what it's behind that board and the actions that you've taken there could inspire a lot of municipalities and a, and a lot of uh, uh, cities around the world. And I think 
that might be very interesting to, to understand a little bit better. And these challenges that you're facing about monitoring, about the climate law that you are, are trying to push together with more cities. And these great examples are truly inspiring. So I wanted to thank you also uh, on behalf of UTMC for everything. And it would be nice to maybe keep the conversation towards the creation of a specific case study about this great example on how you managed to do this governance model that you just showed us, that it's pushing forward so many different aspects to tackle climate change. So I, we will probably send you an email regarding this and hopefully we can get in touch. Probably there's gonna be next year as well, uh, some more steps on how to contribute from all these different projects that you mentioned in different sectors, mobility, very interesting things about food and agriculture, this new urban food that you're working with and contribute towards maybe a, a small publication that we can work together with more cities working in similar topics. So yes, important, actually, very important. And this is appreciated uh, because uh, I, I, I interrupted you, sorry, but it is so important uh, to share all of the experiences uh, with the official uh, baseline, maybe we can share. Yes, we are always talking. We are always trying to talk about our case studies or our inform our revision. But sometimes the publication means everything. Yes. Uh, to show all of the framework to the audience readers or the of the or international area. And yes, this is so appreciated. And maybe I can say in two years we have scientific publications in, as municipality. We're working just like the academia. And I'm always um, uh, surprising uh, about my municipality. Uh, and Antalya may be specific uh, for Turkey or maybe we can share all of the experiences, uh, all of our experiences with other countries. And it's so interesting. I, I can bet that you feel very proud of the scientific publications being appointed there. <laughs> I totally we will have age that. index. Uh, maybe we will have age index as a metropolitan municipality because we have publication with the affiliation of municipality. That's amazing, and that's a great achievement. And again, thank you so much, Fulvio, for sharing this this great presentation and all these examples. We will. I'll I'll personally put in contact with you to to discuss these future steps to mm -hmm. showcase uh, all the great okay. work that you're doing. So thank you so much, Fulvio. Thank you. But, but Carol, maybe I can say two things about the challenge because Igor, Igor asked yes. and uh, I missed uh, data, data quality, data yeah. from the national government and climate law. Yeah. And also the monitoring. I think you, you mentioned that you stressed that a lot. And, and I was at the end when you were showed the CDP uh, work that you've done and, and getting this, uh, this, this, this label, yeah. uh, it's quite interesting. But of course, that's more related to some specific sector of the work that you do but not to, to the whole performance of of the of the municipality so it's interesting to see also learn from other examples about that we have a virtual coffee coming uh in december mm -hmm. around i think it's the 11th of december and we're gonna listen to uh, ideas on dashboards and how to keep track of the what the municipalities are doing so it would be oh, great good. to have you there as well thank you thank you thank you so much fulia take care thank you take care bye bye bye, -bye.